Good morning. Bo, could you please read the problem? And Bobby, could you please translate? Flippin' physics. A uniform solid disc that rotates about a frictionless axle at its center of mass is mounted on a wall, so the plane of the disc is parallel to the wall. A string of negligible mass wraps around the disc and is pulled by a force of 11 newtons. The force applied is 11 newtons. If the radius of the disc is 0.18 meters and the mass of the disc is 1.5 kilograms, what is the angular acceleration of the disc? Radius of disc is 0.18 meters, mass of disc is 1.5 kilograms, and angular acceleration equals question mark. The rotational inertia of a solid disc about its center of mass equals one-half mass times radius squared. Rotational inertia, or moment of inertia, of the solid disc equals one-half mass times radius squared. Actually, let's just calculate the rotational inertia. So, one-half times 1.5 times 0 0.18 squared, or 0 0.0243 kilograms times meters squared. Billy, please solve the problem. Well, let's start with a three-body diagram. There is a force normal acting up on the axle of the disc, and also the force of gravity acting on the disc acts on the center of mass of this disc, which is also at the axle of the disc. Uh, there is a force applied which acts downward on the disc. Uh, that's all the forces. Uh, now, we, now we can sum the torques. We need to identify what we are summing the torques on and where the axis of rotation is. And we need to identify the positive torque direction. Yeah, okay, so let's sum the torques on the disc with the axis of rotation at the axle and divide the positive direction as counterclockwise, which is out of the board. Um, that means the net torque equals the torque due to the force normal plus the torque due to the force of gravity plus torque due to the force applied. Actually, remember, torque equals the R value times the force times the angle between those two vectors. That means both the torque that both torques that act on the axis of rotation have an R value of zero and therefore cause zero torque on the disc. And the direction of the torque caused by the force applied is actually opposite the positive torque direction. It is clockwise or into the board. So the net torque should equal just the negative of the torque caused by the force applied. Right, and that equals rotational inertia times angular acceleration. Uh, now we can substitute in the, the, the radius of the disk for the R value and 90 degrees for the angle between the R vector and the force applied. Uh, the problem did not say which direction the force applied was in, so the angle could be anything, right? But no, because the disc is a circle. No matter what angle the string is pulled at, the string will always be tangent to the circle, and therefore the force will be at a right angle to the radius. Okay, so the angle has to be 90 degrees, and the sine of 90 degrees equals 1. That means angular acceleration equals the negative of the radius of the disc times force applied, all divided by the rotational inertia of the disc. Uh, that equals negative 0 0.18 times 11, all divided by 0 0.0243, uh, or negative 81.4815, or negative 81 radians per second squared with two significant digits. Very nice solution, everybody. Mr. P. Yes, Bo? Why did you choose a direction which would give us a negative angular acceleration? That, that does not make sense to me. I mean... It could have just as easily been positive if you had chosen clockwise or into the board as positive. Actually, I did not choose that direction. However, th I think it's great that Billy did, because now I get to remind you one more time that when using the rotational form of Newton's second law, you have to identify what object or objects you are sending the torques on, where the axis of rotation is, and the direction of positive torque. It's always good to review. Uh, I will also point out that the problem did not actually define any directions, so I would have accepted a positive or negative answer for your angular acceleration. However, it has to match the way you drew your free body diagram and defined the direction of positive torque. Thank you very much for learning with me today. I enjoyed learning with you.